It's Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about no, some hello. different things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, basically anything that catches our interest. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus, and everybody watching us live Hi. on Twitch. That's a thing. That's a place. Hi, middle of the week. You're supposed to be working. What are you up to, man? Come on. <laughs> we were just going to have this normal, regular, weekly, daily Wednesdays and IRCs. Like, no. Uh-uh, hold my sake. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stick around. We're going to talk about that. Um, playing around with some audio stuff. Um, what do we got going on? I got an interesting project. I'm going to be doing the 2021 How All This Nonsense Is Stuck Together video, which I'm late doing it, but I've been waiting for some things to get lined up. And I know if I... See, I just said I was going to do it, so I got to do it. That's going to be interesting to get that out and about. And... um. I'll talk about it more at the end of the show, unless you're watching after the fact. Uh, my stream deck is being powered by Raspberry Pi right now, which is kind of interesting. Hasn't failed on me yet. What's new with you, Joe? You got anything fun? Oh, boy. Well, um, I actually whipped out one of my vintage Linux shirts. This is actually the Frozen Bubble Game uh, Penguin shirt that was released in 2002 to promote the game. But what was interesting about it is it doesn't say for frozen bubble bubble. It says chill out. So possibility maybe that was the original name. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they didn't want to tag it with uh, who was it? Konami, Capcom. Yeah. That, that held the rest yeah. of puzzle bubble. That they're very, very possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pedro, could you have found possibly more clashing colors than pink and red? <laughs> <laughs> you you're a kaleidoscope of fashion faux pas i didn't look at the rubber bands uh what colors they were when i reached into the bag to pull out a couple to help the uh, uh shock mount uh because the elastics that are on there they've been on there for a while and they as it turns out the uh, pro caster as we've established is a bit heavier than the AT2020. A little bit. <laughs> that much. Yes. Um, yeah. And I've also mm -hmm. been playing around um, completely different things, which um, on this laptop that's next to me that I can't pick up because the battery isn't working. Uh, I've been playing with Haiku. It's, uh, I saw there's an operating system in, there. Uh, Discord with that. <laughs> what, what were you doing? You're trying to get yeah. a game running? Would you... <laughs> I installed uh, because I was going through the repos and just installing like everything that I had to, at least a basis of comparison for. And I saw a PPS SPP, the PlayStation Portable emulator. So, oh, okay, let's get that up and running. Got that up and running. Uh, copied one of the games over from the um, um, Pie Boy DMG. There we go. That's the uh. name. Uh, copied one of them over. Uh, I had to use Crusader to access the network mount, but it works. It, it figures out SMB network mounts. That's that's nice. Uh, pulled it, uh, pointed PPS SPP at it, and it played. Admittedly, it was only at like 12 FPS <laughs> because mm. there's no 2D or 3D acceleration at all with any of the GPUs that oh I currently have uh, in Haiku. So... Yeah, it is processor um, software rendering all the way, and it's it tears so much. You move a window, and it tears like three or four times. So it wasn't it's, what you're trying to say is it's not a very pleasant experience, but you get Haiku technically. Yes, it shows a picture on screen at 1080p. It mm. uh, connects to the Wi-Fi. The touchpad isn't working, but HP touchpads have always been a bit flaky, even on Linux. So I might have to plug in a Linux USB drive and see if I can jigger the firmware. I but, think yeah, really what you're going for is the big takeaway from this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is Haiku is still a safe space if you're trying to escape your crippling gaming addiction. Like, yes. right. you're not going to have a good experience no no keep that in mind all right we gotta hop right into this uh starting off with free node uh kind of kind of oh blew up exploded you know what's this mm -hmm. woke up this morning and everyone's like here's the resignation letter here's one here's one here's one I'm like oh geez what happened 
And, uh, well, you know, a few years ago, Freenode uh, was sold to Andrew Lee under the terms, you know, they haven't been, I, I was reading through all this trying to make sense of it. I guess let's go ahead and start off with this. Disclaimer, still developing. We don't have all sides of this. Uh, we're three randos on the internet speculating. Deal with it. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> If, if like something happened, I didn't know that IRC, the DNS entries or what, what exactly name server itself was sold off until today. I'm like, oh, I guess that happened. And there's something about a gag yeah, order. Yeah, apparently so, no one did. <laughs> yeah, well, got like these details <laughs> coming out. And basically it was like due to a leak mm. of um, a personal resignation letter that went down and then just boom, just blew up. And everyone's leaving free node. And what's the new hotness everyone's jumping on? Uh, Libera? A Libera, Libera chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think about that, though? I mean, now, here's something that's very fascinating. The guy who now owns IRC, free node, I should say, is a Korean crown prince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it's a royal cluster F. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> oh. This is just so sad because Free Notes had its, you know, it had its trouble over the years, but this is the worst I've heard. <laughs> oh my gosh. And yeah, so? it looks like uh, um we're gonna, you know, have to here at LGC, we used to have uh Hashtag LGC dash weekly on free node. And I guess we're going to have to change to a new host. <laughs> yeah. The uh, we went to. That article, <laughs> <laughs> that article that Ven was scrolling through, it uh, has like little snippets from uh, a couple of different people, as well as uh, Andrew Lee's side of the story. And when you look at all of them, it's kind of obvious that uh, Mr. Lee's arguments seem a little lacking. In any kind of details or any kind of context, just a bunch of, uh, oh, that person was being real mean to me. And then uh, they decided to stop talking to me. Yeah, that's because the lawyers got involved, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty Listen. sure that's what happened. <laughs> Why do you got to put it like that? Okay. That's, I mean, if you look at through, through such a distorted lens, so I'm not, yeah, close. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is a big lens. It is. Quite as, as far as webcams go. <laughs> so. Uh, when yeah, was the last and, time you actively used IRC? Uh, it was for this very show, and it was several years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not hating on use IRC, it. I'm just genuinely asking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I've used it more recently. I, uh, Jupiter Broadcasting is still using it during their live streams. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, uh, yeah, want to point out... Uh, is yeah. also our discord uh the live channel is also bridged to irc which that bit is working even if the uh, twitch bit seems to be uh <laughs> it's a little problems. down right now <laughs> <laughs> but matthew is right uh the guy um is also th- this is the guy that is the founder of pia as well so yeah i remember their pr- their presence at scale we were all excited because uh you know they were running freenode at the time <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they still are kind of, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, yes. Yeah. It but remains to be seen with one. <laughs> what yeah. It's about. going to be left a free node by the end of the week, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there'll be the name because I'm guessing this all has a lot to do with um, IRC.com. Oh. In the IRC roadmap, <laughs> you know. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Underpants, no man. There's a question mark in here that's probably got to end with profit, but you know, stage two is complete sponsor development of an open a okay, embrace, extend, launch general purpose IRC network. That's not out. Uh, four, launch IRC foundation. Waiting on that. Let's make IRC user friendly. Let's uh, there's the extinguish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, refreshed no. mobile apps, intuitive oh, web no. apps, friends list, no, video calls, file sharing. We're gonna call it not Discord. Um, yeah, <laughs> not Slack, <laughs> not Teams, not literally anything else that already exists. Come mm. on. <laughs> Oh, that, that was a great time to sign me out there, uh, Google Docs. You know, that Carry rarely on. happens. That's a hallmark of doing a live stream. Like, thank you, Google, for 
slogging me out. <laughs> Smack in the middle. <laughs> so yeah, RIP Frito. Uh, I was seeing a lot of people post on uh, Hacker News like, hey man, I've been on Frito for like 20 years, man. And they, they were cranky mm-hmm. that they didn't get like reserved nicks on um, the one everyone's <laughs> jumping. <laughs> like, <"Hey>, this is <laughs> You didn't account for a hostile takeover or hostile move over, whatever the case may be, whichever side you're siding with on this one. (laughs) One of the good things about IRC, though, I mean, you can't stop it. Open protocol. Nope. That's where, I mean, whatever value um, was in is gone. (laughs) I Mm. mean, yeah, free node. RIP. Uh, Free node isn't looking too good right now. I don't know. We, we still get to do LGC Weekly. I saw Frizo uh, jumped in and sent a message. And like, I've yeah. gone ahead and researched yeah. LGC Weekly. And I was telling Pedro, like, we need to get like the real LGC Weekly. Just mm-hmm. to mess with me. <laughs> LGC Weekly underscore real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably do it like Linux Gamecast or something. Because I think there is a like, contractually, you have to have an IRC um, room somewhere if you're doing a Linux podcast. Yes, yeah. you're a Linux show. You gotta have IRC running. Whether true. or not you use it, but it has to be there. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we have up next? Oh, oh this keyboards. is very exciting. Yeah, so System76 <laughs> is completely customizable keyboard that you can swap keycaps, remap keys, and configure multiple layers has been launched. And the name of it is Launch. <laughs> so it's really cool because you can adjust, adjust the Launch key, keyboard's layout with the keyboard configurator application that System76 made for it, which is saved to the Launch's open source firmware. And yes, it, it is System76, so we get open source firmware, which is awesome. And I really actually am loving this, and I will... Be picking one up at some point, definitely, because these are some of my favorite kind of keyboards. These uh, 60% keyboards are awesome. And I think it's really cool that you can customize the even the keyboard. It's got there. Um, I mean, even the space bar, it's got a split space bar and you can put, you know, backspace shift or a uh, function um, on one of the uh, halves of the space bar. Um, and so that. You know, when you're when you're typing quickly, you can just click, uh, use your thumb and and click that function that you use all the time on the keyboard, and that's really cool. It's a really nice idea, and it also has a high speed USB hub, which fe- features USB C and USB A ports, and I always love that in a keyboard. It's one of my favorite things. So yeah, and look at you can you know change. You have two different kind of switches you can use. It's got all the RGB rainbow vomit, (laughs) 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 which is always nice. (laughs) So, yeah, this is a a really cool keyboard. It's right up my alley. (laughs) Now, I'm looking at it. I'm glad it's out. We were going to talk about it last week, but... um, Yes. Yes. (laughs) Turned out they were a day early, so we're just going to pull it back. We'll we'll just talk about it next week with the official announcement. Here it is. 285 wet, stinky caches. Admittedly, if you've ever headed over to our mechanical keyboards and you've seen what some of the ridiculous prices people have paid for their um, hipster clacky keyboards, it's not unreasonable. You know, this is a boutique yeah. item. It's made in Colorado. Mm-hmm. I just need to know, is it dishwasher safe? And um, hmm, <laughs> possibly anyone want to test that? <laughs> Send us a video. It yeah, is 100% I, open I, source, man, because the firmware is based <laughs> on the QMK, which is open source. That's brilliant. And it works with Pop OS, Pedro, the keyboard navigation out of the box. Who would have expected that? I mean, just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who would have thunk it? <laughs> now you can order it right now, starting at two eighty five. I, you know, it's got like super clacky and like slightly less clacky keys on. Mm-hmm. I guess it's yes. good. The, it's the greens and the um, purples, mm-hmm. which I guess tra- would translate to like the blues and the reds or the blacks. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I would have like plaid and. Like brick <laughs> yeah, three, if they're making banana. or commissioning the switches too, they could have literally made them whatever they wanted. 
I do want to point out that even though you can't do the orders right now, they're not going to be shipping until July. So keep that in mind because I saw uh, Empty in our Discord. It's like, yeah, I'm ordering. So when are these things going to ship? Uh, July. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, they better be making them by mm. hand <laughs> for that price. <laughs> yeah, they better be. Mm. Um, yeah. the <laughs> It may not be as expensive when compared to, you know, the typical clacky keyboards uh, that, like Van already mentioned, people like to put together themselves. And this seems to be very much from that same lineage. Just happens to be completely open source as far as the firmware is concerned. And all the tools to get it working properly are available on Linux, which is not the case for a lot of the other ones. <laughs> so... Yeah, the the one saving grace that I could find is like the base layout, at least for a 60, I guess it's a 65% keyboard because it has the cursor keys. Unlike, you know, the other 60%, which don't, which at that point is like, hey, not everyone uses WASD to play video games, okay? Some yes, people need the cursor keys. Nope. Right? <laughs> I, can, I can give you a bag full of arrow keys. You can put them wherever you want them. Uh. <laughs> no, see, uh, there's a story about uh, Portuguese people and teeny tiny little things with shapes on them. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> Listen, just because they're erasers doesn't. <laughs> teeny tiny little food shaped erasers. Oh. So. <laughs> Speaking of teeny tiny food shaped erasers, go ahead and spin that <laughs> Oh boy. Yes. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, drama, last week, uh, this week it may have been IRC, but last week it was actually Audacity, which was the whole um, telemetry thing and how one developer was saying that this was just a proposal, this was just a thing, and then there were people taking screenshots and saying that uh, if it's just a proposal, then what were you doing on these commits? And then the out of uh, branch commit that reverted the whole thing. Well, uh, Tentacruel has decided to put out an actual. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's damage attempt control at budget, appeasement. Uh, yes, damage control uh, attempt of appeasement of the community in general because everyone threw uh, their hands up and going, yeah, figures the moment Audacity gets picked up by someone, things like <laughs> these happen. So the proposal it, here like the is first salvo out of the gate for, you know, acquiring mm. the Audacity name and all that. The first shot shouldn't be something that could have very well caused a hard fork in the project. Like, oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I think they recognize that because they propose dropping telemetry altogether now, <laughs> uh, requiring features that uh, require network. Uh, they would like to introduce error reporting and they will self-host and collect all the data without using Google or Yandex. And then the little bit afterwards is what happened. The creation and subsequent discussion of uh, that um, discovery of uh, that particular pull request was bad communication slash coordination. You don't say. And then it <laughs> ends that particular um, that particular bit by giving an example of back in 2019 in MuseCore, they did something that was fairly similar, but they said up front what they were going to do. They were very open about it. And then it's like, I think the fact that we introduced the issue openly resulted in a lot less suspicion. You think? Y you think? Yeah. <laughs> if you're up front with people that you're, oh, we're going to start collecting things. Um, it, we're whether or not it's by default, at least you're upfront about it. It's like, yes, we're going to be collecting, collecting things, not, oh, uh, we're going, to, we've already been collecting things for a few hours. If you've pulled uh, the sources and built them yourself, yeah, you're already uh, sending us telemetry. People don't like that. Oh, well. Go figure. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what's really awesome, actually, is... Um, that there's, they are going to be doing update checking. So when Audacity is launched, and and that's a great idea to check whether it's the uh, newest version of the software or not. And a lot of other uh, programs do this. So this is, you know, not not considered a, <laughs> a violation of security by a lot of people. And um, error reporting will also be enabled in the official release versions. 
of Audacity, um, which are available from their website or GitHub. So we have update checking and error reporting, which is is what us Linux users are used to <laughs> on most of our software. So that is actually really cool. Mm. And um, if it's not the official release, um, the other builds uh, will it would be excluded by default, which is really good for the error correcting and the update checking. So only get that in the official release. Yeah, and you just got to look mm-hmm. at it because whatever's going to be shipping with your distribution is not going to have that built in. And um, it's good to have the telemetry out, even though that can be useful. But hey, they learned a thing. They did a good after doing an incredible not good out of the gate. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> people still have some issues with no. news. I read through that. A lot of that's above my pay grade with licensing and GPL. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I don't know. I think Audacity as what it is you know no one's jumping ship right now no then again uh, i mean audacity is pretty well established and there's always going to be that older version that you've been using this whole time you could just keep using that yeah don't update and uh, i need my six magnifying glasses man (laughs) (laughs) yeah maybe you really like your 10 billion magnifying glasses that each does a completely different thing than the other, despite having very similar icons. But hey, <laughs> that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can I honestly say in like well over a decade, I've never clicked on one. I was scared. Because um, there was this one time I accidentally <laughs> so. clicked on something in Audacity's menu interface, and it took me half an afternoon to get it back to where I wanted it. What did I do? Oh, uh, yeah. I think we've all been through <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> so... Let's stick with the audio train and Pipewire's got a little bit of an update. Um, well, an interview, but it's explaining some of the new stuff uh, about the audio and video daemon in Fedora Linux 34, which, you know, this is going to just cover, you know, you know, whim daemons, long track record, G streamer. It's mm-hmm. great. But this is just a real quick recap of um, awesome progress with the project you know i'm championing at least on the audio side i'm unfamiliar with the video side of pipeware because i know for a fact that it will solve a lot of issues on desktop linux and i'm going to say double good job on fedora for pushing it out to the public you know i hope more distros follow and have willing test subjects like the fedora community Uh, a couple of things we were talking about pipeware that i'm still keeping an eye on you know, recently we got free willing support that uh, was pushed out, I think, today in the official release, which is good for anybody working a DAW or anything like that. That allows Jack to just come into a spin so you can just process things real quick without having to wait on that. That's brilliant to see. Latency reporting is still in the to-do list along with NetJack. Those two are still in the work, so I can't like hop in and play with it. Of course, I'm going to let it chill out regardless. I will say this. I will say this for my little piece. There's a like little thing in the to-do list at the end, like, hmm, maybe we can just work in Zeta net to Jack. That's not a solution. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> As the one person who uses net Jack on behalf of that person, me, um, if we could get something like very close to how net Jack one functions with latency reporting. So... Harris and Mixbus and Adore can make sense of it. That'd be brilliant. I'd be very happy. Mm. Well, I, you know, this article actually was really, really good because, uh, you know, the, that interview was awesome with Wim. And um, he talked about uh, Pulse Video uh, kind of being the birth of Pipewire. And I remember being excited about Pulse Video because it would allow you to multiplex and stream a webcam device to multiple applications at the same time just like a Pulse Audio does with audio. So um, that it was that development, and it was because of this work on Pulse Video and some of the Linux multimedia answers that needed to be solved that we even got pop, Pipewire. So this is, yep. it, it, it was, this was a really good interview, and he went into the history, um, how Pipewire came about, and uh, I learned a lot in this interview, definitely. Yeah, and one of the things that they uh, were talking about when they first uh, started talking about actually pushing Pipewire out was uh, as sort of a replacement to GStreamer, but it seems that they've walked that back a little bit. 
right now the plan is very much to not replace GStreamer and just have GStreamer handle the high level stuff while uh, Pipewire basically handles all of the low level stuff, the stuff that users don't really want to see. You really don't want to learn Pulse Audio or you really don't want to learn Jack <laughs> in order to just use your desktop Linux, but still be able to use fancy equipment like interfaces and microphones and guitars mm -hmm. and what have you. So that's probably a good idea, um, especially since most of the user facing software, like all the front ends for everything, expects GStreamer to be there nowadays. Most of them, not all, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> uh, I guess uh, someone is probably going to drop a well actually on me right now. Just <laughs> I know I use this one application no. and it doesn't <laughs> require GStreamer. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, okay <laughs> listen, you, you leave at the target audience, though. I mean, we're trying to file Linux audio down. We're getting all the sharp edges, wrapping it in styrofoam. Yep. Where a Windows user can, <laughs> I mean, a Windows Pro audio user can make sense of it. So mm -hmm. th this is the <laughs> there are no video editors on Linux at all <laughs> or audio. I always like when somebody picks, I, I, picks a fight, not even a fight, but a conversation. Cause I always like end their audio setup and it was like, Oh yes. And this is the mix down for our live closed captioning system. I'm sorry. What? hundred <laughs> percent track record of like, pff, they're out of that conversation, but I am looking forward to the advancements of Pipeware. I'm looking forward to use it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Exciting. <laughs> Once it's ready. <laughs> One password. We finally got it. It's here. Yeah. It's officially here. At least according to uh, the five folks behind One Password. Uh, if you've been one of the people that's been screaming that they want the proper One Password client on Linux instead of just the browser uh, extension, there you go. In fact, it actually enables a lot of the stuff that you couldn't do with just a browser extension. You have access to all of that now. Uh, An electron, you, which did, is I guess you'll, a browser. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it is a web app for all intents and purposes still, but it is the desktop client and it does enable uh, some extra functionality with the password uh, sync and everything else that 1Password already does. It's... Yeah, I guess uh, now if they go up to someone's like, yo, you should totally subscribe to our uh, monthly payment scheme because of things. And uh, Linux users used to go, yeah, where's the Linux version of that? They can't do that anymore. <laughs> it's there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I honestly, I've never used one password. I, I haven't really even heard anything much about them. The only thing I can remember was a little bit of non troversy because when they updated to... I think it was one password seven. Mm -hmm. uh, when they did that update, they charged people for it because there was a significant enough improvement that they felt like, okay, we should probably charge people for this to recoup some of the money. And a lot of people threw a bit of a fit as usual. <laughs> it's like, I already paid for it. Like, yeah. You gotta pay more because <laughs> it's the new version, but I already paid for it. So yeah, no, that was the only thing I could find. One thing I get to think about, I, I don't understand, like, for as, like, end users, home users, a sustainable business model based on that, like, enterprise, corporate, maybe, but, hey, it turns out that Linux support was their most requested feature, so I think that's neat, especially they got a dark mode, GNOME KDE, wallet support, DBoss integration, X11 clipboard support, all right, I'm done with that. Mm -hmm. and when it comes to installing it, they have, uh, it's available for Deb, Scent, Arch, and uh, just a Tarda GZ. So you're like, boom, put in anything else you want. To which I'm down with. Yeah. Well, 1Password is actually very That's easy to fine, use. Yeah. I have used it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it's got oh, a really. Come on, Jill. I thought you were going to use hard yeah. ones to use. That's what I look for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jill's it's looking one of for the... a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of the easiest ones to use out there, and it's it's Take good a picture for of this uh... QR code that randomly jumps around on the screen. There we go. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and the other cool thing is is that you, we get new features first on the Linux version, which is really nice, and those will trickle down to the Windows and Mac version. But some of the new features are secure file attachments, and there's going to be a watchtower dashboard to monitor and evaluate your password security health, and quick find and intelligent search suggestions, and a, you know revamped interface. So that's that's really great, and we get it on Linux first. 
So kudos to 1Password. Yay. Pedro, what exact mm-hmm. service do you use to store your passwords? Just um, curious. Let the internet Firefox know. Sync uh, and Google Passwords. <laughs> Google Passwords, man. You got to be careful with Google Passwords. <laughs> it's too functional. Also, when you... Yes, I have Google <laughs> Passwords and Firefox Sync basically syncing each other up all the time. So, okay. <laughs> it's pretty close with that. So be, be careful with the yeah. Google suggested passwords simply because if you forget that and you're not there to like click that I button and you can't get back in, you have no idea what that password is. You can't sit there and reverse engineer Same with the Firefox ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but one thing you can do with Chrome now is um, back forward cache. The desktop. Yeah. Page so this is cool. Wizardry. Yeah. So the Google Chrome browser for desktop is getting actually a huge speed boost. The developers are bringing, um, they're bringing back forward cache to Chrome for desktop, which provides instantaneous page loading when navigating backwards or forwards. And actually this was introduced on Android last year. And, um, but what's cool is it it is it will become experimental with the Google Chrome 92 release for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And it won't be enabled by default, but you can test it out by enabling the Chrome uh, flags back forward cache option in recent versions of Chrome and even other Chromium-based browsers. And I had mm-hmm. tested it. Um, on Vivaldi on this very machine um, several days ago, and it seemed to be working really good and fast. I haven't had any issues with it, so okay. I was I was excited that, that, about this because I, I remember, yeah, I remember how good how good it is on Android. So it actually works really well on Android. <laughs> yeah, the, the no, my experience with uh, backwards and forwards has well, it's taught me something. I have the muscle memory that whenever I do back on a browser, <laughs> I have to do control shift R uh, to make sure that it actually refreshes properly because something's mm-hmm. always broken. It, it it never works properly. So hopefully this will help fix that. Although the way I'm mm-hmm. looking at it, it's just going to make it worse because it used to be that if you went back, it usually went to a cached version. But if you went forward, it would actually reload the thing. Probably. Yeah, that's right. It's not doing that anymore, <laughs> so it might be doubly broken now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now, just on the Chrome topic, one thing I was excited to see is uh, you, you ran into it. I'm sure if you used um, Google Chrome, is it'll tell you if like your passwords were in um, a database that's been compromised. And that's very annoying because you immediately go, I don't care about all those accounts. Go away. Um <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that's what I did. I went back to look. Accounts. Oh, all of those games. Yeah, no, that, that, those passwords. Uh, can go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they said they're going to be slowly rolling that out to a few select sites now. Where it because that was my first thought. I'm like, why don't we have the option? Go do that for me, Google, because I don't want to log into all those sites and reset the passwords mm-hmm. and do the emails and the two factors. They're going to start being able to do that. You trust you trust the Googs to do that. They already have my passwords. Why wouldn't I? I don't listen. Yeah. We're not talking about reasons. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they already have my accounts. They hold my phone hostage. Yeah. They basically have full control of my life. Why wouldn't I? We live in Seriously. the Google verse. <laughs> we live in the Google verse. The, the nice thing is, it is at the recent Google I.O. conference, they were just focused on security. I mean, all the talks were security, security on uh all their different apps and software. So I was really happy to hear that. Mm-mm-mm. No, that's the, <laughs> the only, um, well, yeah, yeah, we do need to continue talking about phones because we got to talk about something called a bald phone. We do? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> interesting name, by the way. So this is bald phone. It's a new accessibility interface for your Android smartphone suited for seniors and the visually impaired. And people have a hard time seeing the small icons and fonts on phones. And this actually replaces your phone's interface with an easy-to-use and easy-to-see iconified desktop. And it actually, actually looks, looks very pretty good. I'm not going to yeah, lie. It's, <laughs> it's really nice good. looking. And it looks very similar to the easy-to-use Jitterbug interface uh, for Android that is actually locked down to just a few models of Jitterbug Great Call phones. So they can charge whatever they want to their customers. But this, it'll work on any Android phone, regardless of carrier. 
And, it, you know, it's just nice to have another option for seniors and uh, those of us who are visually impaired and one that is open source, free, and will work on Android devices that you already own. So you don't have to go out and buy a new device or get on a new, you know, carrier plan for this. <laughs> it's really nice. I guess this all boils down to how easy this is to get up and running and install, right? It, it was an APK. I, I didn't go through the install, but it looked very, fairly simple. It was available it's in the Play Store F-Droid. and F-Droid. Yeah. Yeah. And Google Play. And on the Play Store as well, yeah. probably. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead and play with this. Mm-hmm. Put it on your friends and family's phone. Just don't tell them. And... <laughs> yeah, just yes. watch them unlock their phone and go, oh, God, what? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this is an easy enough interface for my Steve husband who gets frustrated with smartphones. <laughs> Oh, he was like this. <laughs> I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I always like to see innovations like this. And I, I saw mm-hmm. the, the video for the people who are watching the video version. Um, the YouTube video had one down vote. So I assume at least one person from Jitterbug watched it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that looks better than ours. How <laughs> dare. That's an entire yeah. business model. <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm cool with that. And let's see. What do we got? Two more little things before we get out of here. We're running a little bit long. But. I want to let everyone know that I finished up the review for the Mageable 11100 Pro Capture Quad HDMI. And how do you get it up and running on Linux and all the fun stuff? I go through the installation, the setup, and the fan hacks because that fan was like super shouty loud. So we got out the (laughs) heat gun and we cut wires and voided warranties, all that fun stuff. (laughs) But I walk you through Pulse Audio setup, OBS setup, how you get audio working with the HDMI because, you know, unlike a black magic card, this works like a standard, um, like webcam or capture device. So you got to get that set up correctly. And, uh, I even had to like, I had, I had a question because it wasn't as fast as my black magic card. I'm like, that's not right. And it turns out it doesn't have low latency enabled by default. So I walk mm. you through the MW cap controls to get that up and going. All in all, because of our fancy review thing, it gets a 4.75 out of five circles. I don't know. I don't really have a rating. <laughs> uh, is that homage <laughs> to the now defunct Google Plus? Sure. The circles. Yes. <laughs> but you got to pay for it. And that that's the very unfortunate thing is this thing retails for $899. So yeah. <laughs> it's, you, you really need one and you really got to know that you need one for a thing before you can cut that kind of check. Right. Yeah. No, for most personal use, that's that, that's a, the no price. <laughs> that's the, uh, maybe it's cheaper on eBay and then you go look on eBay, not cheap enough. Not really. <laughs> yeah. I, I got very fortunate. There's a story. Go watch the video if you want behind how I ended up getting one that was brand new, but for nothing, like three hundred dollars. One one way I was able to justify doing it is because I didn't see anybody. I couldn't find a video. I was like, "This is how you set up, you know, the curdle scripts and all that." I'm mm-hmm. glad I did. But at three hundred dollars, I can sell this thing all day long for five hundred bucks, and people will buy it. So yeah, no. If you get lucky on eBay and you find it for reasonably cheap, even if it turns out to be not the thing, you'll basically recoup all of the money that you spent. Even I'm, if it's not your thing, so listen, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep it because it's got one feature that none of my Black Magic capture devices have: blue LEDs. Ah. Uh, oh, okay. You have your ring on it, then. It blinks blue. It's blue. <laughs> Second thing I disabled. <laughs> <laughs> That that was genuine. That seems a, a little extreme for something you never see, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean, they're there for so you can look at your ingestion server and see what's got signal and what, and they can like you know Morse code. Oh, so yeah, you actually get activity. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's like no, 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 no. We, we got. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't talk any smack about it. Uh, hey, uh, we got a little bit of a slice of pie. I'm gonna be talking about the stream deck in just a hot second. If you like what we do, um. Mm-hmm. Come support us over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We are community funded and uh, we got a gang of people. We got to think. We do. This very <laughs> week. Yeah. So we have um, 
a Stephen B, who is a new patron. And we have Doom2.Wad. <laughs> That's an awesome name. Who's a new <laughs> new patron? And Fluttershy two thousand seventy seven gave us uh, five dollars in bits. Five dollars in bits. <laughs> yeah, <Yep. laughs> it, it took bits. Five thousand whole bits. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to give a thank to um, a full thank, not a partial thank, but one full thank to Arthurin. <laughs> Every now and then you'll catch me. We got wish lists and I got one for the studio and it's always full of boring stuff. But um, that's how you end up on this wall of shame back here. <laughs> and you send me a little note, which I got to read, which I'm always happy to read because it's kind of fun. And this is just a pop filter, metallic pop filter. I wanted, you know, a pop filter that could double as home defense. <laughs> slicey slicey <laughs> <laughs> gotta admit they did a really good job of like filing the edges off so I'm a little sad about that but <laughs> nonetheless um, Arthur and Resin hi then hope your current pop filter isn't as disease filled petri dish of nope that Jordan's last one is yeah <laughs> A truly horrifying, horrifying thing. Um, in any case, enjoy your new fly spotter, which I will be able to do. And all the worst from Arthur. And thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Arthur. Very sweet. Hugs. <laughs> that was, yeah, no, that uh, Jordan's previous uh, <laughs> uh, pop filter was disgusting, to say the least. <laughs> A little audio pro tip. Don't don't eat don't eat in front of the pop filter. Or if you yeah. do eat, <laughs> if you do eat, uh, like aim for your mouth better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, eat down the side. <laughs> don't I, eat directly mm. into the microphone. <laughs> no, I like to try to catch it. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I remember when I Jordan one flipped it over. It's like, eh. Ew, yuck. <laughs> I, I went up and you get I don't that? even. Now we know. Yeah. I don't even eat in my computer room, so I only think drink water and drink bubbly. <laughs> That's about it. Oh yeah, guaranteed. <laughs> Your pop filter yeah. will look amazing if you do it like Jill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or better yet, get and a metal one. Then you can just throw it in the um, dishwasher. Like you're done, sterilized. Yeah, and swat some flies. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we have? One little slice of pie this mm -hmm. week. And we're going to do that with a slice of goth pie. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so crunchy. Black and white. It is. Uh, this is something I ran across. You know what a stream deck is? It streams decks. Yes. that That's what the name <laughs> means, right? Allegedly. <laughs> What are these little front mean, porches all day? You, you mean the, the deck that's overhanging the beach on, on my house in Mexico? No, no, I'm talking about a piece of electronics. Or, or, so. or, or, show off. <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about is a very, very overpriced piece of hardware for what it is. Because, mm, Pedro, I know you've seen... Um, multiple occasions, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's where you got to understand. It's, uh, you know, like, what is this? Three, five, 15 OLED screens with touch sensitivity built into. You've seen this. You've seen people. I've, you know, mm -hmm. you've seen these comments. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's about $3 worth of a cheapest LCD that you can get with a membrane touch over the entire thing. But they still want. What are these things cost? I don't even have even looked at them in a while. But. The cheap one is like 90 pounds here. Is that and the one with the a button, button on it? One? Oh. You yeah. mean like the little line? Oh, the Y <laughs> one? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the it's six buttons. It's three on top, three on the bottom. That's. Yeah. yeah. I think there's one smaller and than that. I stupid. swear I've seen one with just a line. <laughs> I haven't oh, seen yeah, that there, one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a modular one, then that you can buy, you know, as many buttons or as few buttons as you want. Uh, does each button cost like $50? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way to use them previously with Letics is it was a little Python script. Somebody, a uh, beautiful gentleman reverse engineered and he was like, okay, I'll make this work. And, you know, using like XD tool to do window capture, you know, to change between different windows. And the way you used your stream deck was to assign hotkeys and OBS, which 
fun and adventures, kids. When you're one, if you're trying to capture a game and you switch scenes, you're going to lose focus on that. So there goes your mouse. Oh, that's always interesting. If you're full screen, you're out of full screen. Mm. That can be a small problem. And sometimes you get like random ghost clicks because you hit that, it grabs the wrong thing. Then you're like, why is audacity opening? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, just changing focus to the window that it's uh, trying to interact with. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's guesstimating by like name pattern matching. So things can get squirrely. I've read into this. Well, this is where Companion comes in. But Focus Companion is open source. And the reason I want to bring it up is because you, you can run it at local host. You can set it up, compile it, get everything running, you know, just connect local host, port 8000, be done with it. But they make available a Raspberry Pi image that you can run on just about any Raspberry Pi from a Raspberry Pi 0 to 0W. Or I have it currently running on an 8 gig Pi 4 because overkill. Why not? Hey, man. Mm. And it's not just for stream decks. Not at all. I mean, this has modules for, you know, Behringer Wings, Mage Will Pro Convert Decoders, New Tech TriCasters, OBS, Ubiquity nice. stuff, Blackmagic Atom. You name it, there's a module for it. And I'm using one for OBS with OBS WebSockets. And what I loved about it it did exactly what it said on the tin. I just flashed that to an SD card, put it in, booted, hit the IP address. There it is. Drag some buttons over. Done. It just works. That's mm. that's a very good, Brilliant. very good way to do it, like software wise, mm-hmm. which I wish a lot more people would do is just have the image ready. Just let people download. Don't make them learn your thing. No one wants to learn your thing. <laughs> they just want to use it. It's got a nice little gooey to it, and it just yeah, launches. I was very impressed. It's very similar to the Kaluge I've been using because I didn't like using the XD tool. So I had SH scripts and running my own local web server that was connecting to. It was a hack is the reason. <laughs> Like on these shows, I've mentioned it a couple of times. If I'm never making that video. Now I never have to because um, this is this exists and it's brilliant. I'll be doing a little video, a little setup guide and walk through on how awesome. to get something running. So look forward to that. But we got to run. Pedro, if uh, people need we to get do. hold to us. Uh, LinuxGameCast.com. Contact button. Fill out the form. LWDW is the show you want to pick. We'll feature your message right here, right, right the now. Spam if you have eats my email, but there's no way around uh, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, no. you should totally, absolutely read the things before the uh, <laughs> uh-uh. the no uh, contact way, form. Zero way around no. it. And no, there's absolutely no way around the spam golem. It's uh, it will eat your email and not let you send us any more hate mail or mm. feedback, as the case may be. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> If you do like, <laughs> just if you had, like something thing. big and long, and I, I only get like a little tourniqueted thing, and I never check because we use clean talk, cleantalk.org at the service to pull it through. So basically, if you copy pasta mm-hmm. anything from like a website or if you get a bunch of links in there, but if you're just typing something out and dropping in a URL, chances are it's going to get through. But if not, there's also an email address. That's what we were kind of hitting at in the page. So yeah. We got to bounce out of here, everyone. It's been awesome. Yeah. Thank you for showing up, and we'll see you again next week. But I got to press buttons that might not work right. So, yes. hang on. <laughs> Let's see if this works. <laughs> Yay! We have our credits to thank our beautiful patrons. <laughs> Every single one of them. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I've never seen awesome. most of them, but. They're all beautiful. except for Steve. Oh, <laughs> we have a new patron named Steven. He is named Stephen B. And Doom to Wad, thank you again. And Fluttershy two thousand seventy seven, thank you for the bits. <laughs> Thanks again for the pop filter out there. And I like practical things. I know I. I yeah. I don't ever have awesome. anything exciting like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there are no in between bits. Uh, tomahawk, orange, actual. No in betweens. It's all one shots. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. 
Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>